welcome to all visitors with us this morning. Also, we welcome all of you worshiping with us online this morning. I'm Reverend Alan Rutherford, pastor of St. John's Episcopal Church in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Today is the last Sunday of July, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. The liturgy for this service can be found on our website at MTV St. John's, or if you have a Book of Common Prayer, you can follow along beginning on page 355. Before I get started this morning, I have one little quick announcement. Um, Susie Colson was scheduled to be coffee hour hostess, and they've had a lot of tree damage on their property. And uh, so there are uh, goodies out there, but if I could get uh, somebody to help out being hostess, if you want to play rock, scissors, paper, I'm just going to do that, <laughs> or uh, go together on it. Um, but need a little help this morning. And there's cookies in the freezer that can come out. Well, there's plenty of other stuff, too. <laughs> You're trying to get rid of those cookies from last week, aren't you? I mean, just remember they're in there. Okay. I don't know. There, might, there might be one or two cookies less than there was last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just saying. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seven years for Rachel, 
and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love that he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving another seven years. Jacob did so, and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated as we pray the psalm found in your attachment. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing the grace to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Sing to the Lord in his strength, see his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of the servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are all are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac. Which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute. Thanks be to God. 
and he explains it in all of these little short parables. He starts off by talking about, and I'll put some of these together, the mustard seed and the yeast are kind of the same. And that there's something that's very small that's hidden, and it's, it's insignificant in its tininess. And it starts out small, but yet it has this effect of pervading and growing in great significance. As I thought about this, I thought, okay, what, what can I think of, you know, this maybe different modern, and of all the things I thought of the kudzu plant, <laughs> that, you know, they brought it to the United States for a, you know, a specific purpose, and now it's, they call it the weed of the South, it's, and I, it's even in here in Mount Vernon, and, or, and in uh, Evansville and various places. The second, he talks about this, the treasure in the, the field and the pearl of great value or great price. And he, so he's telling us that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is of great value. It's something that, that we need to seek out and that, that at all costs that we need to, to try to get a hold of it. I was reminded of the saying, you know, that if you have to ask what the cost is, you can't afford it. But the kingdom of heaven is something that, that we can afford if we sacrifice enough for the kingdom. And that begs the question, what is the cost of discipleship? What is the cost of following Jesus? The cost is to sacrifice everything that the world has to offer us in order to give our life to Jesus Christ. The world, and I, the world is a mountain of unkept promises. If you think back to the Garden of Eden, the serpent says, if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. How many of, of us think that we're gods? Well, maybe some of us do. I don't know. <laughs> the third one is, is this net full of fish that when they gather all these fish together, and they go sorting through them that they realize that some, you know, are worth eating and some are not worth eating. Being a fisherman myself, you know, you go down to the Ohio River and you can catch anything, but, you know, some are worth eating and some aren't worth eating. The kingdom of heaven is, is for those who uh, sacrifice and surrender uh, all that they have for Jesus. This, is a, this, this little parable is a reminder that there is a judgment day that will come. And the question will be asked, have we borne fruit worthy of the kingdom? Have, have, we, done, have we done something that, that has helped further the kingdom along? And then finally, he ends up this group with talking about the scribe. Uh, the good scribe is like a master who brings out all of his old treasure and all of his, uh, and his old treasure and his new treasure. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, uh, one of the themes that runs through this is that Jesus is the new Moses, or he is just like Moses. And one of the things that they have in common is that uh, they Moses had the Shema, love God, love your neighbor and as you love yourself. And one of the parables or one of the stories that we have in all the Gospels is the, the lawyer that comes to Jesus and asks him, what is the greatest of the laws? And Jesus says, love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And then oh, the second one is love your neighbor as you love yourself. So love is an important theme for both of them. Uh, Lydia and I, uh, at the end of June, when we were on vacation, we went over to Cincinnati uh, to go to a Cincinnati Reds game. Buying the tickets was no big deal, but uh, with the distance, you know, we usually spend the night over and then uh, drive back home. So when we got to looking for hotel rooms, close to the ballpark, they were anywhere from $500 to, to $1,000. And we could not figure that out. So then our daughter wised us up and said, oh, well, Taylor Swift is in town that weekend. 
And so we had this be about 30 miles away or so from, uh, had to be in Lawrenceburg uh, to get something even remotely cheap, or not cheap, but inexpensive. But one of the things that Cincinnati did was uh, they pro proclaimed that weekend as Taylor Swift weekend and gave her the, key, the keys to the city. And they gave you a big, you know, fake key and you do whatever. But that's common with celebrities whenever, big celebrities, whenever they roll into a town, and even sometimes not so celebrities roll into a small town. You know, I wonder who would have to roll into Mount Vernon for us to give them the keys to the city. The kingdom, the, the love is the key to the kingdom of heaven. Love is the key to the kingdom of heaven. And I can compare that and add in these parables. That love is like the mustard seed and the yeast. Love can be a small thing, a small act of kindness, but then when that's paid forward and paid forward, it's like, it's like a, a pebble dropped in the ocean that while it's, it starts rippling out and eventually it's like a tsunami, a good tsunami. Love is also like hidden treasure or a pearl of great price. To get it, you have to risk something. You have to risk being vulnerable in your life and risk returning love uh, to get love back as well. Without love, we are like worthless fish that we might as well just be discarded. And we're like treasure uh, that is old and new. Think of all the love that you've had in your life, the, the old love that you've had all through your life growing up, and the people that have loved you, and what kind of love did they give you, the unconditional love that they might have given you. And then the, the love that you might still have at any age in your life, that you have now or you might even have till the day you die and then you have the greatest love of all because then you get to fully know the love of God in Jesus Christ if you're looking for the kingdom look for love look for where love is shared and then there you will find God and you will find the kingdom Amen, Amen. <coughs> Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the 19th century. We believe in one God.
true church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, we especially pray this week for the Anglican Church in the region of Central America in the Anglican cycle of prayer. And we pray for the clergy in hospital chaplaincy in the diocesan cycle of prayer. We also offer our prayer for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Brasilia and their Bishop Mauricio, and for our partnership with St. Andrew's Matan in the Episcopal Diocese of Haiti. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, for the leaders of all nations, for Eric, our governor, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Mount Vernon, for Bill Curtis, our mayor, for our surrounding cities and communities, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and the orphans, for the sick and the suffering, we especially pray for those who are ill, Quincy Fitzgerald and Ted O'Dell. We also pray for those with special needs, Barbara O'Dell, Lydia, the Granderson family, the Marshall Anderson family, the Sobecks, the Goodens, Paul Fraturo, the Stovers, the Dingmans, Wendy Doniger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks to the Lord for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for big brothers and big sisters and young life, wildlife, and for their work with the youth in our community. We give thanks for the rain that you brought to us yesterday. We give thanks for those who are helping in uh, recovery from storm damage. For God's continued healing and protection. For our friends and family, we give thanks. For the ongoing discussions of cooperative ministry between the Northern Diocese of Indiana and our diocese. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, we remember this day Slick Johnson, Andy Granderson, and Bill Lang. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. John and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our lives to Christ our God. To thee, Lord our God. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us 
and all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
For those watching at home or traveling, let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.